heard about Rumi? Rumi was an amazingly deep poet who lived in 13th century in my home country, Turkey, and practiced Sufism, a movement to understand the universe under the lenses of sensation, beauty, and love, as well as care about integrity, dignity, and sincerity. Once he said, do not feel lonely. The entire universe is inside you. As a Rumi admirer at MIT Media Lab, I am the director of the Conformable Decoders Research Group. We are the interpreters for the entire universe inside us. It's a language without words. A beating heart, neuronal activity, peristaltic forces in GI tract, or dry patch of skin. They are all saying something important, speaking the unique language of the universe. It's a lexicon that's completely different from the Turkish and English that I speak every day, but it's one, it's one I believe we need to start translating in earnest. In Conformable Decoders Group, we explore the human body, the entire universe, via our conformable devices, but in a system level. We do all these beautiful, implantable, wearable, attachable biomedical devices in our special lab clean room called Yellow Box. Yellow Box, Media Lab's cleanest lab space, and is devoted for our research group's exploration of novel materials, device design, fabrication strategies to create mechanically adaptive micro and nanoscale electromechanical system which can have intimate integration with any target object. And as seen, this lab is physically transparent. People often say, this is a media lab style, but I refuse. It's my style. When I was a PhD student in Illinois, I was one of the few female students in the group. And back to Turkey, I received great theoretical knowledge, but very little practical knowledge. Whenever I asked a question, I was rarely getting an answer. Instead of being sad and going back to my home country, I took a chair, went to the lab, sat on it, and observed everyone from morning to night for months and years until I found my working recipe to develop my biomedical devices. And I promised myself, in future, if I have a chance to build my own lab, I'll make it physically transparent so that everyone can see through whatever we do inside the clean room without taking any permissions or trainings. And I can proudly say that this was my first project that I finalized with speed of light, less than six months, including its design and construction. As a proof, I have many white hairs. And finally, I also fulfilled my, my father's dream. He always wanted me to be an architect, and now I work as an architect and design this lab. And this is how they look like in the clean room, like a minions, and you, can you cannot recognize who is who. This is great. And um, this is how we work inside the clean room. We need to work in the clean room by wearing the bunny suits, because in this room, for instance, we have billions of particles. But in our special lab, we have limited particles, less than 100. And um, because the feature size of our devices are so tiny, we don't want any dust particle to be a part of our device. Otherwise, the devices will not be functional. And we go inside the clean room as a cohort, and we work collectively. And the lab is yellow, not only because yellow is my favorite color, it's also because we use UV-sensitive polymers and we use special lighting to block the UV light so that the polymers will be functional throughout the process. And we use traditional microfabrication techniques and tricks and we hack them based on our research needs and create flexible, stretchable, uh, mechanically adaptive devices that can take the shape of any human body organs. So far, I have been very lucky to meet with beautiful people all around the world and practice my science on them. Since ever I was a child, I have been interested in science. As a child growing up in Istanbul, I had a mission. I spent playtime smashing up rocks, looking for the atoms inside. Everyone was telling me that it was an impossible task. But my father put a book about Madame Curie in my hands instead. I think he thought I would be inspired by Madame Curie, but when I read the book, 
I fell in love with her husband, Pierre Curie, who discovered piezoelectricity. What does piezoelectric mean? Piezo means stress strain deformation, and electric means positive and negative charges. When you mechanically deform a piezoelectric material, it produces voltage and current. And you can use these devices, materials, in the forms of sensors, actuators, and transducers, and mechanical energy harvesters. And of course, I did my first trial on my brother, Janesh. But now, I can use my devices on my skin, and I can make these soft tissue-like um, piezo devices by exploiting novel microfabrication techniques and tricks in my dream lab, Yellow Box. And my research has also a personal tone. When I was five years old, I learned that my grandfather had passed away due to heart failure at just 28. And even as a ch young child, I promised that I would do something to help the heart patients when I, when I reached the same age, 28. And I did it. Many scientists are inspired by nature, whereas our research is inspired by the diseases of our family members and dear friends. We develop devices which can tackle this disease problems uh, throughout the day. I personally believe that Digestion is vital in three main organs, heart, brain, and stomach. When we digest knowledge in brain, passion and love in heart, food in stomach, we can generate universal strength which can propel anyone, no matter who we are and where we are coming from. Let's start with heart. Heart is not only a symbol of romance. It's also a vital and important hardworking organ which can maintain human life. It has to beat every time. And out of 40 million heartbeats in a year, missing just a few can end your life. Imagine the heart as a real human dynamo. Every heartbeat of yours can be used to generate electricity. And from the natural organs, internal organs movements, such as lungs, diaphragm, and heart, we can harness electricity and power the biomedical devices. Active biomedical devices rely on battery power. When a battery is depleted, the battery has to be removed. And I have focused on the operation of cardiac pacemakers. Extending battery life of a pacemaker or eliminating the need for replacement would spare patients from repeated operations and any surgical complications. And um, I developed a device with a battery that never needs to be replaced and is powered by the heart's own motion. Simple heartbeat. Now, it's a little bit graphic. This is a beating cow heart where we place our piezoelectric malleable tattoo-like devices on top. Whenever your heart beats, whenever you inhale and exhale, this device is deformed and produces voltage and current so that you can run and pace back your heart or you can use this energy by saving and storing in a pacemaker and you use it whenever you need it. So that you don't need to change your pacemaker every six to seven years due to the depleted battery. Given that this is an implantable device, we are also working in a wearable version at the MIT Media Lab currently, where we use these devices like a tattoo on your joint, such as knee, elbow, or a piece of your textile. So whenever you walk, whenever you do your daily activities, you will create the energy and wirelessly send the needed electronics. Now, let's move to the stomach. This is an ingestible pill which can permit real-time, long-term gastric mortality evaluation. And this pill can take its entire fantastic voyage, traveling all the way from a patient's mouth well to the other end, without any invasive scoping or prodding involved. And you, you may simply think of it as a Fitbit for the stomach. Whenever you eat, whenever you drink, this device can tell how much output how much volume that you intake. And it's kind of a Turkish carpet. It's a flexible device. We roll it and we place in a dissolvable capsule. And through endoscopy, we lower it down to the stomach. When the dissolvable capsule is dissolved away, the carpet opens up and stick on the stomach lining. And based on the piezoelectricity phenomena, as I described before, whenever you eat, whenever you drink, this device gives you a voltage output. 
and through that voltage output, you can understand how your stomach is doing. And the beauty of this device is cell-powered. You don't need to power it with something else because it's based on the piezoelectric effect. And we did uh, first trials on this uh, for this device on the pig model, and it perfectly worked. And for two days, actually for three days, uh, due to the smart encapsulation that we have on top of the device, the device survived electrically and mechanically in a very acidic environment in stomach without no problem. Now let's move to the brain. This is not world minds, it's a brain minds. It's a minimally invasive neuronal drug delivery system. This device is an implantable, remotely controllable device which can deliver therapeutics to the deep brain with pinpoint accuracy uh, in a closed loop system. And the um, device has different, uh, different components and it's, it's an implantable and remotely controllable device that you can send special codes through your computer and infuse multiple drugs on demand in the deep brain. We have an electrode system inside the device which can read the neuronal potential of the deep brain and find out if you have a broken circuit or not. And we have infusion canalas which allows, in, which allows us to infuse multiple drugs on demand in the deep brain. And we cover everything in a polymer template and the place in a, in a 3D uh, stainless steel uh, needle. And we have a device hooked with the remotely controllable micro pumps, which allows us to infuse picoliters of drugs in the deep brain so that you can decrease the systemic toxicity so well. Because right now, if you have a neurodegenerative disorder such as Parkinson's disease, you have to take the drugs orally or intravenously, which is unnecessarily affecting your whole body. But with the microfabrication techniques that we use, we can make three-dimensional little type devices which can go inside the deep brain and infuse multiple drugs on demand. And along the way, we discover something really so phenomenal. We target a special uh, location in the deep brain, which is called substantia nigra, where we have dopaminergic neurons. And we infuse a special drug called muscomol. By infusing this drug, you can let an animal to turn right or left, run and stop, by just sending a special code from your computer. It's a little scary, but at the same time, uh, offer many different uh, applications and features. And this is the first device in the literature which allows so little tiny drug infusions in the deep brain without any backflow or diffusion over time. And we deploy these devices in, light, uh, in small devices such as rats, as well as the non-human primates, macaques, to show the difference in, bet in between the species. And now we are on our way to combine this, this beautiful platforms, powerful platforms together to start a new journey to understand the entire universe in our body. Not only we do science, we also communicate the way how we do science with beauty, as Rumi suggested centuries ago. Struggles that we face every day can be turned into a beautiful response. The bees of science, and this is my first art blended science exhibit at the main lobby of the Media Lab. And the bees of science is not only an exhibit, it's a window through which I would like to everyone to observe and understand how we do science with profound integrity and long lasting impact, like the lifespan of honey. This is a timeline of our exhibition. In every honeycomb that we have, we have students, uh, a device platform, as well as their inspiration combined together in a special filming so that when you look from one angle, you see the device part of the invention. When you look from the other angle, you can see their inspiration. It can be a butterfly, it can be ultrasound image of a baby in infant, or it can be a portrait of your grandma. And I believe this is also a good way to inspire young generation who will come after us, after us and maybe give presentations here at this stage. Life is splendid, but too short. We embrace our daily frustrations and experimental failures, and we do our science with a media lab style. Bold, impactful, joyful, elegant, and fast. We are very much looking forward in the contributing in the decoding pro pro process of the beautiful universe that we have in our sites. Until next time, please take care of universe. Thank you.